welcome to Capacity TV. My name is Nadine Hawkins and I'm the editor of Capacity Media. I'm joined at ITW 2024 by Michael Wheeler, Executive Vice President, Head of Global Internet Network at NTT Data. Thank you for joining us, Michael. It's good to be here, Nadine. NTT Data has just announced an enhanced DDoS mitigation solution for service providers as part of your DDoS protection service offering. Can you describe the service and what it encompasses? Certainly. Uh, yeah, we just did the announcement today, so we're very excited about it. Uh, our DDoS or DPS platform for DDoS mitigation service we've had for a long time. Uh, there's kind of a variety of levels of that service for our average uh, customer. Uh, but we wanted to be able to uh, provide uh, kind of another revenue opportunity or even a value added proposition opportunity for customers so they could extend that down to their end users, their end customers. And so uh, it took a while to put that together because you're talking about different levels of interaction with a, with a customer and an end user, uh, but it leverages off of what we already have had in place for many years, uh, but it provides that opportunity for uh, someone to white label our service to sell to their end customers put whatever packaging and bundling around it they might want to put on it and create more revenue for them as well as broaden kind of the service they can sell to customers. So it's yeah, something we've worked on for actually a couple of years and really excited about and we're hoping that everyone uh, comes and checks it out. Your global IP network division is now part of NTT Data and Work, which was formed with the integration of NTT Data and NTT Limited. What are the benefits you've seen as a result of this integration for your division and company in general? Uh, I think the benefits are a couple fold. I mean, for, for us as a division, it, it creates an even bigger organization for us to work with from a go-to-market point of view in different parts of the world. Uh, and for customers of services, it really allows for all the global offerings that NTT has had historically that were in maybe different parts of the organization to fall under one umbrella and the Entity Data umbrella and Data Inc. and allow us to really kind of have a cohesive go-to-market strategy and, and set of teams that are you know, not just partnered with other people internally, but are actually part of the same organization. So from a marketplace perspective, it's, it's been also something that has been in process for about four or five years, uh, but we're really at the final stages of that journey and really being able to pull the organizations together to be able to offer that to the marketplace. Talking specifically about your tier one global network, two new points of presence were recently added in Denver and Phoenix. Can you talk about these expansions and, and why you selected those areas? Yeah, we launched Denver and Phoenix this last year in the network. There are two markets we'd looked at for a number of years. And for us, it's always about identifying the right level of opportunity for us to make the investment in infrastructure and deployment we do in the market. So we were able to kind of finally capture what we needed to see the business case be rational and kind of provide the return we, we expect. Um, so far, we're very happy with the results. There's still you know, quite, a, quite a lot of room still for us to grow in those markets. And, and we see that would be happening over the next couple of years. But they're really what I would, call you know, kind of secondary internet markets in the United States and that they're not a San Jose or an Ashburn or a New York uh, kind of scale, but they're important markets because they're in the middle of the country, uh, which are kind of you know, far away from the coast essentially. So they, they help kind of create connectivity between the markets that we weren't already in uh, previously. So we're, we're excited about what those have to offer and we continue to always look for new markets to, to grow into, not just in the US, but anywhere globally where we we don't have a presence already, and it's something that's kind of a normal part of our regular business assessment. Okay, and of the number of trends taking place in the communications industry, AI is, is probably one of the largest that we've been talking about, especially here at ITW. As a global provider, how do you get your network ready to support AI-enabled applications and services? Yeah, so there's a couple of things I would, I would point out. I think, you know, to get the network ready is a, is a kind of a massive thing in the sense of the volume of traffic that could be uh, that can come along with a generative AI kind of killer application will be huge. That's not here today yet. Um, certainly doing the, you know, the, the, the large language models and all of the processing that'll associate to that are really in the early stages of being kind of put in place and, and deployed. There's not a killer app at this point yet other than people asking questions, the chat, chat GPT or whatever, but um, th that'll be something that we'll see progress over time. But we're actually look, you know, already using Gen AI and some of our own operational uh, uh, mechanics that we do to you know, validate uh, route configurations, different, different operational controls. We aren't using it to do those, but we're using it to uh, compare to what we've done and see if what we've done kind of, if we missed anything, or if there's some aspect of that configuration or of that operational decision that we could have done differently. So we're certainly not letting the machines control the machines, but we're wanting to leverage off that, you know, that machine and that intelligence capability to validate that we've made the best kind of configuration decision that, we're, that we do. So we'll, we'll continue to explore that and play with that a bit. 
It's uh, something that we think there's a lot of opportunity for, but we've got to prove it out and make sure that it, it provides the right result and the right benefit for us and the, and the network. Yeah. Finally, we talked about network security earlier. You're a member of the Global Leaders Forum, which is amazing, um, and lead the Network Security Working Group. What is the purpose of the group and, and what would you say their key achievements are so far? Yeah, so the, the GLF is obviously, a, you know, a, has a broad set of initiatives. And one of the ones uh, a few years ago that I really wanted to champion was the network security working group. So we put that in place and established that. And, and initially, it was really just ensuring that the, the network operators that are responsible for network security in the different members of the GLF had an opportunity and a platform to kind of talk and engage. Um, and so that was the first kind of step that we, that we achieved. And I think that's been very beneficial. Those relationships are very valuable when we talk about network security and troubleshooting network security issues. And so, you know, that, that, that part of that, that progression was, was early on. We've done a number of things regarding building tools and creating kind of platforms and interactions for those, those uh, participants to, to engage with each other. And so that achievement's been, been ongoing and will continue to be something we enhance over time. Uh, but it's really ensuring that we have a good collaboration amongst the network operators. The internet is kind of, uh, you know, only as powerful as all the participants that are willing to, to, to be a part of that. And so we want to encourage that as much as we can. So um, we'll, you know, we'll continue to see progressions happen there, but it starts with knowing who the other network security operators are inside those networks and ensuring that they have a platform to engage with each other. Yeah, it's really valuable work. Thank you so much for joining us at ITW 2024. It was great to catch up with you. It's good to see you.